All right, it's been a while. Hopefully everyone's doing okay. Um, I think I'm almost done with the tutorials. I don't know why I'm taking so long. You guys need to rush me. Um, I'm going to be covering two functions today because they work hand in hand. I'm going to be covering tap and I'm going to be covering delay on. Let's start with tap. Uh, these are amazing functions. I use them a lot uh, just because they, they pretty much save room on my quad stick. But uh, let's go with tap. So on the Quasic Manager, Quasic Manager, Quasic Manual, online manual, it says um, when you have it on tap, when the input activates for less than 500 milliseconds and you release it, the output activates. So pretty much is the faster you do it, uh, the easier it gets. Um, saying that again, it's um, when you have tap as a function and um, you press the input and you like go as fast as possible, it will activate the command. Uh, you, you can add a parameter to it, you know, add your own timer to it, and you can actually add a second parameter to it, and I'll show you right now. So let's start with an example of how it actually works. Let me just blabbing. Here we go. Let me just yeah. Let me just move this over right here, and we're gonna pay paying attention from lines twenty two to. 25 the green area and we'll start with square lines 22 it says tap 500 i put it as 500 and i put it on right center sip so what's going to happen is tap 500 means i have 500 milliseconds to let go of right center sip and if i do it correctly it will activate square so and it just does it briefly and notice it on this xbox controller is going to be x which is the blue. So it, the faster I, I do it, then it activates. And it activates exactly when I stop, you know, right center sipping it. Once I stop the input, it's going to activate the command. It's pretty useful. It's not good for rapid stuff. It's more of a quick succession. So if I were to right center sip and I hold it, you'll notice nothing happening. Nothing happened. Uh, because I went over the time limit. I went over 500. So that's why they call it tap. It's pretty straightforward on there. Uh, now going to the second parameter. I don't really use this myself, but it's good to know. Lines 23 is on triangle. It has the same number, tap 500, but I put 2000 as the second parameter. So what's going to happen is, if I let go below the 500 millisecond mark, it will activate triangle which is why and if done correctly it will hold on to triangle or y for two whole seconds so i'll show you right now and that one is going to be right center puff so see i right center puffed it on my quad stick and you'll notice it's holding it by itself for two whole seconds and then it lets go so this is the timing on the parameters the first parameter is how long of a duration do you have before it turns on? Uh, that's your like time limit. And then the second parameter is, if done successfully, how long should it hold it for? Um, hopefully I draw it somewhere on here. But that's pretty straightforward, you know. Um, I like mine to be between 250 to like 450 as a tap. Uh, do note. Do not put it too low where it's impossible for you to do it. Like I have it on lines 24. It says X, which is a tap 50 milliseconds. It's on center puff. I feel like it's impossible to do. Like I'm going to try it right now. I'm going to try to do it really quick. I can't activate it. Nothing happens. Why? Because 50 milliseconds is impossible for me to achieve physically. Um, so I'm never going to activate it because it's too low of a number. If I put it to 200, maybe I can. But you know, you kind of kind of have the sweet spot. So the sweet spot for me is between eh, 250 to higher, you know? 250 and up. That's pretty much it. I use this a lot and I'll explain how I use it in a little bit. Let me move on to the lay on. Mm, the lay on. It says basically, hold up. Pretty much. The lay on will turn on after a certain time period. So by default, 
delay on is set to 1000 milliseconds, which means I have to input for one whole second and then the command activates. Uh, anything before it, it won't. It pretty much says, I'm gonna wait till you hold this button, this button for this amount of time before I turn on. Um, this is just words, let me just show you. So, this one's actually one of my favorite ones. Uh, seems like I have a lot of favorite ones, then I delay on. I set these on the right analog stick, so pay attention to right here. The analog stick. I put delay on 1000, and so to activate, uh, we're gonna be focusing on lines 18 to 21. So if I left center sip and I tap it, you notice nothing's happening. Mm, so because it doesn't activate right away. I physically have to left center sip it for one whole second, 1000 milliseconds, and then it's going to move the right joystick to the left. And then when I let go, it turns off. So you notice it activating right there? It's going to go slightly to the left. And then when I let go, it turns off. It's very useful, especially when I want to combine buttons together. Uh, this is good. Or if I want to do a combo, like, uh, like if you're playing Diablo and you want to put like three different buttons together, you can do that too, depending how you want to structure it. But it's pretty straightforward after that. Like uh, whatever number you put on the first parameter is how long you have to hold the button before it activates. 1000 is excessive, it's extremely long. I like mine between 300 and up, uh, just so it can activate, but not too quickly, catch my drift. And the second parameter is just like tap. The second parameter means once you activate it successfully, it will pulsate it or hold on to it till it's over. So if you look at lines 22 to 21, if I left puff it, activate it, it would stay held for two seconds, then turn off. So it's gonna go right joystick up, left puff. It activated it and it's still holding onto it and then it turns off on its own. I'm not really a fan of second parameters, but it's there if you need it. But now let me show you how to use it. This is where you start combining stuff. This is what saves you room on your quad stick. So pretty much you'll see here, uh, from lines 18 all the way down to 21, the green spots. Uh, I set everything to be the same. I set my tap to be 399 and my delay out to be 400. So the rule here is for combining buttons, right? Is if you're going to be combining tap and delay on, delay on must be higher than tap at all cost. Uh, this is to prevent from both of them to conflicting with each other. Think of it as an or. It's either going to be this button or it's going to be this. It's never going to be both at the same time. So having them on separate numbers, it's a benefit to you. And um, delay on always has to be higher than tap. So tap can never be a higher number than delay on if you're going to be combining them. Now let me show you what I mean by combining now. So if you look at lines 18 and 19, we have square and right trigger or R2. All right. And it's set on right center ship. And if I tap right center sip, you'll notice it hits X, right? But what if I don't want X? What if I want to activate right trigger on the same button? If I hold on to right center sip, it's not going to activate X at all or square. It's going to activate the right trigger. So now if I hold on to right center sip, it's going to activate right trigger. See how you notice it's never X and right trigger at the same time. It's either one or the other. So you can only do that one or right trigger, not both. So it's really cool, especially when you're using keybinds or like you're running out of room on your quad stick and that's all you have. This is perfect, especially for like buttons that are important, but not too important, important. So let me just show you more. So lines 20, 21, same thing. If I right center puff it, tap it, it'll do triangle. But if I do it again, it'll be the right bumper, the right triangle. Then if I hold it, it's right bumper, but it's never both. It's really cool. Now, let me just show you what games benefited from this. It's pretty neat. 
Halo Combat Evolved, it's not too much of an issue. Uh, I ran out of room. And so the way I did it is, you don't really crouch in Halo, especially in the story mode, but you do switch grenades. So I did it to where if I tap it on left sip, it will crouch, activating circle. But if I hold it, it'll switch grenades. So that's kind of like one way of doing it. This is how the way I have it. Uh, you'll notice that I have tap on 349, but delay on is going to be 350. Why? Because it can't be the same number. Tap has to be lower than delay on at all cost. Uh, Breath of the Wild, I think I'll have an example on here. Um, it's kind of wonky, the buttons. I play on the emulator just because of convenience. But I noticed that you don't sprint and jump on the same button, which is kind of dumb. Most games you sprint and jump, well, depending on the action. So what I did is if I tap right center puff, it would activate sprint. I mean, my bad. If I hold on to right center puff, it would sprint my character length. But if I tap it, it will do a quick jump. It is really benefit since I like to have both of them on the same button. So this is pretty neat. And this one, I do notice that I do notice that they're not on the same number. Let me fix that. No wonder I have it all wonky. Sometimes I make mistakes on my profiles. Uh, I noticed when I was playing the games, it was acting up. So this would be beneficial right there. I think it is 249. Much better. That's more... On Apex Legends, I don't really use it as much, but like, I ran out of room. So if I triple puff, if I tap it, it does melee. But if I hold it, it does my ultimate. So this actually made it to where I can combine two buttons at once. This is a pretty, pretty neat little combination device. They work hand in hand perfectly. Have a good day, guys. Um, catch you on the next one.